All right, before we get this episode started, after you watch this, if you enjoy it, please remember to subscribe, like, comment, and share. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and my channel. A big thank you to you for that. Now, here's this week's episode. Hi everybody and welcome to our first open water fishing outing of 2023 and it's not musky to start. I've got my wife Sandy and we're going to try for some walleye with some slip bobbers or smallmouth or whatever bites. So stick with us, let's see what happens. Okay so we're anchored in a, uh, a spot here that has a sandbar coming out in this direction. And out here is a rock pile. So I got Sandy on the shade side of this sandbar. And I'll see if we can pick, up, pick her up here someplace. There she is. And I'm off the back towards that rock pile. And see if we can pick up mine. I'm right there. It's our first outing. We want tight lines. <laughs> All right, stick with us. We're fishing. Well, we gave it an hour. I was pitching a big old artificial earthworm and uh, basically trying for walleye and nothing. So I think we can get this back in the, put this back in the sauce for next time. And Sandy was pitching a, a great uh, thing. A three inch uh, gulp alive minnow. And uh, between the minnow and the gulp alive earthworm, a Canadian night crawler size, uh, the walleye weren't biting. We gave it an hour here on a spot that we like, and we come up empty. Okay, just watch that hook so you don't end up getting hooked or hook me. That's what's nice about these. They go back in the juice and uh, they're good to use again as long as they don't get tore up. And, uh, and they work if you've watched any of our videos using these Gulp Alive 3 inch um, minnows, artificial minnows. We've had some phenomenal action on the pontoon boat using those with slip bobbers. But not today. First outing of the season. It's still May. Um, we're going to do some motor trolling now. We're going to get rigged up for that. I'll pull the anchor up and uh, See you in a little bit once we're rigged up and trolling. There we go. All right, we're ready to start trolling. I'm going to be trolling a uh, perch color here. Um, kind of a medium depth uh, troll. Got a little rattle to it also, but a perch color. That's what I'll throw. And Sandy picked out a flashy white kind of like a uh, I don't know what you'd call it a Cisco pattern maybe clown color it's kind of yellowish on top a nice red head to attract the fish uh, again similar style just different colors same action same sound let's see if the color turns them on Well, we're coming off of the cribs with uh, no luck, so we'll shut it off. And like I said, we get into the action, you'll be sure to see it. We ended up making another trolling pass around the entire lake with no luck. Not a bite or a fish to be had. This is not a good start to the 2023 open water fishing season. So we called it a night and headed back to the cabin. Memorial Day. Now we're usually up north where we put out our flags along the shoreline in honor of Memorial Day. And I make sure before we come up north that the family grave sites 
are decorated for Memorial Day also, as it is a day to remember the fallen heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice. And it has a special meaning for our family and always will. You see, we are the descendants of a Gold Star family of World War II. Now with the birth of my grandson Wes and granddaughter Michaela, our family is now three generations past what was known as the greatest generation. It was our uncle Ralph T. Terzinski, who as a member of that generation made the ultimate sacrifice. On October 11, 1944, as a 19-year-old combat infantryman in the Po Valley in Northern Italy. On this day, we solemnly remember his sacrifice and give thanks for the freedoms that generation provided for this nation. Our family has a direct connection and knows and remembers the cost. Plus, our family has a history of serving our country, starting with my grandfather, Ted Terzinski's service with the American Expeditionary Force in France in World War I. Then, the greatest generation, my mom, Loretta Rappin, after her brother Ralph was killed in action, she joined the Army Air Corps as a medical corpsman. She served from 1944 through 1945. And my dad, Martin Rappin, served as a combat infantryman with the 28th Division, also known as the Bloody Bucket Division, participating in the brutal hedgerow fighting in Normandy the Allied breakout from Normandy at St. Lô, the liberation of Paris, the Battle of the Hürtgen Forest as the Allied armies entered Germany for the first time, and the Battle of the Bulge, where his unit, the 110th Infantry Regiment, was decimated as they fought to delay the German 6th Panzer Army's progress in the early days of the battle thus allowing time for American reinforcements to reach Bastogne and make a heroic stand, turning the tide of the battle. He served from 1942 through 1945. Now they all survived war and passed on later. So today, we also remember their service to their country as now deceased members of the U.S. military. All right, we're uh along a road here in northern Wisconsin, not too far from the cabin. We took the truck to drive a little bit, and we're just searching out some uh, wild raspberry and blackberry patches. I know it's early, but uh, we wanted to come out here and take a look. Um, so I hit this first spot. I'm going to walk up the road. Sandy's staying in because of the mosquitoes. Right now they're not too bad, but I'm going to take a look here along the roadside here and see what we got to see. So. Those are all elms and that, elm trees. So, there were berry patches along here. We've picked them in the past. Not sure anymore. It's been quite a while since we picked them. They may have been further down the road too, but, but I'm going to look right here. This may be a, a berry patch in here. But again, I'm not sure. Yeah, I see that it's maple leaves, but these. Here they are, here they are. We got some right here. There's another one right there. Got some back in there. What about any more here? Oh yeah, here too, right there. I'll remember this spot where the roads come together. We got a couple of nice berry bushes there I believe so found another batch they're right here we got them another batch right here so a couple of batches here by the road this is the most of them still not as many as there used to be when we used to pick them but down around the bend and a little bit right in here but around the bend where those roads meet where we were at that had the most promising one that had like three four five uh, bush patches 
of raspberries. So, After a successful scouting trip locating some wild raspberry patches for future picking, Sandy and I stopped at Culver's for a couple of ice cream sundaes. Then, after supper, we sat at the campfire and listened to the haunting sounds of the loons calling each other. Our last day at the cabin for Memorial Week, we were greeted by a gorgeous day, clear blue sunny skies, and temps pushing 80 degrees by late morning. Sandy made BLTs for an early lunch with ice cold Cokes to wash it all down. Now Sandy would be heading out on the dock to enjoy the warm weather and soak up some sun in a little while. But I'd be gone before she'd get out there because, well, I had other plans. We've got the 12 foot duck boat rigged for pan fishing and bass fishing. We're going with some ultra light rods, and uh, we're all set. There we go. Now, this is our last day up here. We usually pull out around 3 30. This way we get almost a full day up here at the lake cabin and we miss all the rush hour traffic going home. We get home between 7.30 and 8 in the evening. Gives us plenty of time to unpack and relax. And besides, we're retired now, both of us. So anyways, we went out on the pontoon a couple of days ago, uh, chased some walleye for about an hour, never even had a bite from a bass, nothing in an hour. So um, we were on a spot that we like for walleye. I've caught, uh, what was that, a 21-inch walleye out there. It's the largest one in that area, but we got nothing. So after an hour of that, um, we rigged up and we went motor trolling on the lake, uh, trolling plugs for muskie and lake trout. Uh, we trolled for about an hour and a half and never had a strike. So this being the last day and us heading home this afternoon, it was supposed to rain. I had everything buttoned up. Well, caught the weather forecast this morning. The rain's pushed off till tomorrow. So, um, we got this ready. I, I really got a hankering for the first tight line of the 2023 season. So I'm gonna work our area. I've seen bass in here feeding. I've, I viewed bass from the dock. And uh, I just wanna get a tight line for the first time in a 2023 fishing season. So. We're going out and we're chasing bass and panfish. So stick with us, join us on the water. Let's have some fun. Let's go fish. All right, let's get our anchor in and let's get to fishing. Alright, we are uh, in position, I'm going to get the rods rigged and uh, we'll be with you shortly. Okay, we're rigged up, we've got a little uh, MEP spinner, uh, silver blade with a uh, white and red tail on it and we're going to do some casting around docks and that, a little deeper water and then as we work in a little closer to the shore, we'll go with our uh, our bobber here, and yeah, we'll, we'll work that, but uh, we got some docks in that to work right now. Let's see what happens here. Oh, feels good to be casting. Not out of our uh, bass tracker, but uh, at least I'm on the water in a boat casting. Looking for some bass. This kind of fan casting the deeper water of the bay to start with. And like I said, we'll work a little closer to shoreline. Just see if there's any active big fish out here in a little bit of deeper water. Alright, I think 
think we're going to move in a little closer to the shoreline. So, uh, nothing happened in here. We worked this area pretty good. So, we're going to uh, reposition the boat. We'll shut off the camera. We'll be with you shortly. I see one sitting on a rock. He ain't chasing this one. I'm going to bring it right over on the First tight line of the season. What do we got? Rock bass. Nice little rock bass. First fish of the 2023 season. We got a tight line. There we go. Nice little rock bass. Maybe four or five inches. But the first tight line of the 2023 fishing season. All right. Here we go. We got it. Whoa, jumping. Stay down, stay down. I think we got a bass. First bass of the season. Yep. Uh, stay on until I get in position here. There we go. Small bass. Now we're catching fish. Tight line again. There we go. Large mouth. I don't know, maybe about uh, six inch, six inch large mouth. But we're starting. We're getting fish. He's gone. Oh, I spoke some in there. Hey, we got one on. We got another fish. We're pulling this one out of the tamarack reeds. I don't know. Oh, yeah, it looks like another bass. Trying to keep them down. A little bit bigger. Oh, yeah, a little bigger. A little bigger bass. That's a little better. There we go. A little better. A little bigger. Third fish. This one's got to be in that, uh, oh, I'd say 9 to 10 inch range. A little better. Putting fish in the boat. Memorial weekend, our last afternoon, 20 after 12, in our bay. Just trying to get some tight lines, fellas. And have some fun out here. Fish on. Pulled another one out of there. That's where we need to be. We found the spot. Another bass. Don't jump, don't jump, don't jump, don't jump. Ooh, bigger rock bass. This guy, he's got a little belly on him too. He's been feeding. Okay, try doing this by hand. There we go. That was a little easier by hand. A little bit of rock bass. That looks to be about that uh, seven inch range, six, seven inch range. So. That's four. After being shut out on walleye and muskie, <laughs> feels good to have a tight line. I hear a voice. I think Sandy's out. Yep. Sandy's out on the dock. We're going to catch some rays while I fish today. No, I've I got to I got to get the lure right up in the tamaracks. Entice them. That one. Another bass. A rock bass. Rock bass.
Well, buddy, I'm trying to get you loose here. I just don't want to end up with a treble hook in my thumb. See? Now you bounced on the hot. I know it's hot. I know it's hot. Okay. Another small, uh, maybe five inch rock bass. That's number five. And another one, number six. What do we got this time? Little smorgasbord. Yeah. Another rock bass. Another small rock bass. Damn you. No, don't go under there. I'll never get you out. See, now you're all dirty. Now you're all dirty. Another five inch rock bass. At six. Like I said, feels good just to get a tight line. <laughs> I must have said that a half a dozen times already. But these are the first fish for me for the 2023 season. But again, the key is getting it in tight on the cover in those tamaracks. Oh, that was cool. He came and hit it right at the boat. I watched him. I think this is a bluegill. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look at that gill. Holy cow. Look at this bluegill, fellas. Huh? Let's see if we can get them off. Let me get you. Uh, let's relax. Get yourself upside down here. Yeah. Holy cow. When you can get your thumb in its mouth, you know you got a gill. This, it's got to be eight and a half, nine inches. Take a look at this compared to my hand. Look at that. But, let's check this one out. This one looks like a female. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this one's a female. So this one's going back because they're going to be spawning. Uh, normally I keep this one, but early season spawn. This is what keeps the fishery going. You release these large females in the spring. Don't keep them. You'll deplete the resource. So eight and a half, nine inch female loaded with spawn, it looks like, or loaded with eggs. I'm sorry, loaded with eggs. She's going back. Away she goes. Like I said, CCR, practice it. Catch, conserve, replenish. You want to keep that resource available for future generations. That was a nice bluegill. I saw her flare her mouth. <laughs> that small mouth really opened to engulf that spinnerbait. So, all right. I don't know, I think that's fish number seven. Um, we fish this about an hour. And uh, the first half hour was slow, but the second half hour, we put seven fish in the boat once we figured out the pattern in this area. Stick with us, we'll be with you shortly. Hopefully show you some more fish. We're set up in the other corner of the bay. And we got some rocks, tamaracks. Let's see what we can do over here. And we'll keep throwing the spinner bait as long as it's producing. First one, Ooh, bigger bass, nice one. Not huge by any means, but nice bass. There we go. About a, I'd say maybe a seven, seven to eight inch bass. That's uh, fish number eight. We can pitch one in there. There 
Here we go. Got him. Another bass. Stay down, buddy. Stay down. Stay down. Let's see if I swing him in here. Yeah. Yeah, not too bad. Now, this guy's on the bottom of the lip. So let's do this. Turn you upside down. There. Yeah. Easy off. And again, that uh, seven inch bass. So, uh, fish number nine. We got nine. We're trying for double figures. And then we'd like to make a dozen. One more gives us 10. And we got about 20 minutes. So, in fact, I had to go in by those tamaracks and uh, disturb all those fish. We're going to the other side of the bay. I think right here. Short anchor and we'll fish right here. Okay, so when I talk tamarack trees, this is what I'm referring to. You got little trees growing in the water. These have been trimmed and cut down. But we got some shade, we got rocks. Got some rocks back there. We got the dock to fish. And uh, we got 20 more minutes, so stick with us. Let's put some more fish in the boat. Got one. That's number 10. Ooh, this one's fighting nice. Bigger bass, bigger bass. This is our best bass of the day. Oh, we had another one coming out after it. This one's in the 10 to 12 inch range. Let's get this one in the boat. Up it goes, whoa. Get the stress off the line. Wes, I took a page out of your book. Hot weather, go shallow and pull out the big ones. This is our big one of the day. This is, looks like about a 12 incher. Nice bass, 12 inches, less than a foot of water in the shade. Go get the big ones. That's 10, we're in double figures. And we had another one following it out as this one was struggling, the other one was following it. Now we'll give this till 1.30 and then we're gonna fish around by our dock. We are right outside our dock area, so. We're going to work this for the last 25 minutes, see what we get. Yeah, we got one. That's 11. Nice bass. Oh no. Stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on. Oh, I lost them at the boat. Ten and a half? <laughs> Crap. Come on, we want to get two. We should be able to pick up two here. We should have had that one. We should have had that one. Oh, that's a nice, this is a nice fish. This is a nice fish. Stay down. Don't jump. Stay down. This is our biggest bass of the day. Stay down. This is a nice bass. This is a nice bass. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Gotcha. That's our best bass of the day, right there. That's 11 for sure. This has got to be 14 inches. Nice fish. That's 11. 11 fish, biggest bass, beautiful looking fish. Going back. We need one more fish to make the dozen. And we got about 15 minutes. Got him. We got him. We got number 12. Another bass. Why did I get him in? 
Oh, 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 oh. our biggest, biggest rock bass of the day. Nice. Our biggest rock bass of the day, or tied it. This is in that seven, seven inch range. Fish number 12, we did the dozen. All right. We got 12 and we got 12 minutes left. Let's get a baker's dozen, let's make 13. We just had number 13 hit at the boat. I looked at him opening his mouth and mouthing the bait. Looked like another rock bass. Come on, let's get 13. Got him. We got number 13. Yep, 13 is on. Another big rock bass. Look at that. We're getting some nice rock bass. Another nice, this one looks like pushing eight inch, eight inch rock bass. So number 13. And all of them are coming on this spinner. This uh, silver bladed MEPS uh, white bucktail with a little red tail spinner. All right. Hey, that was a fun time, and uh, we were out two and a half hours. We boated 13, so, hey, thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you on the next video. Feel free to comment below, or if you don't want to comment in the public eye, we can also be reached at rappinoutdoors360 at gmail.com. Now, if you know somebody you think might enjoy this video series, please feel free to go ahead and share this video or this link with your friend. And as always, whether you fish or hunt, remember, practice CCR. Catch, conserve, replenish. Make sure that that resource is available for future generations. See you next time, guys.